My name is Tiffany Verga, and I'm here from the UN Library and Archives here in Geneva. What was your role when you first met Kofi Annan? I met Kofi Annan a few days after I joined the organization in May of 2000. I had just been uh, hired as an associate spokesperson by Kofi's then spokesman, uh, Fred Eckhart. And if you could share with us in one word, how would you describe Kofi Annan? Kofi Annan, I think, was a listener. He took the time to listen to people uh, and then would make his decision. And do you have any anecdotes or a story that you could share with us? You know, in, um, in 2002, in the fall of 2002, my, my second child was, was born. And very soon after he was born, he was in the intensive care uh, unit. He got extremely, extremely sick. He's fine now. He's a very healthy and a ram uh, very active 19-year-old. But at that time, we, we didn't know if he would make it. And I remember, I remember being in the hospital, um, and I, I hadn't worked for Kofi uh, that long, but I remember he and Ned would call every day. And I, and I still remember that. It's been, you know, it's been 20 years, and I still get emotional about it. I'm so glad that he could be there for you at the time. Yep. How did you feel when the Nobel Peace Prize was awarded? You know, I think I had been in the UN for, for less than a year, really, or just about a year and a half. Uh, and it was such an explosion of joy uh, for those of us um, who worked at headquarters and, and the colleagues who worked uh, in the field. Uh, a recognition of the work the UN had been doing uh, for decades, a recognition we felt uh, of the leader that we had, of a, a caring leader, um, a leader that carried the hopes of so many people around the world. And it was as if the, the Nobel Peace Committee uh, understood uh, what we knew about Kofi Annan and what we knew about the organization that we were all so dedicated to. And is there anything else that you'd like to add about Kofi Annan that you could share with us? Sure. I think, you know, to, to me, I had, uh, I joined the UN about mid-career. Uh, I'd done about 10 years in, in television and in, in broadcast television in the U.S. Um, and with people who were, let me just put it their way, there were a lot of big egos uh, in network television uh, in the US, I'm sure as they are just about anywhere. And I remember the first time I met Kofi, uh, I was introduced to him by, by my boss, Fred, and we rode up in the elevator together. And in those 10 minutes, I felt that I was working for a person who listened, uh, who cared, um, who had a lot of, uh, a lot of charisma, uh, yet was extremely uh, approachable. Um, and it re remained that uh, to the day I last, um, I last saw him. Um, I became his spokesman in 2005 after my uh, Fred Eckhart uh, retired. And this was a difficult time for the UN. It was the oil for food. There was just a lot of challenges. And I remember him getting very mad at me just once. And it was very short, but it was very clear. And I think it left me a little shaken. And then uh, one of his assistants who saw it, he said, uh, oh, don't, don't worry. The fact that he got mad at you, you means you're part of the family now. <laughs> but it was, and he was right to get mad at me. I had done something, I had done something he told me not, uh, not to do. Uh, but I, I just, I have just such warm memories of, of him. Um, and uh, also just a huge place in my heart for Nan. Mm -hmm.